Uh, what have we got here? As the sun turns away from the moon, the moon wanders out. As the sun moves closer to the moon, the moon wanders in. Equals new moon. The planets are fixed in their circular cycles, a fixed tune each, and the moon wanders across them, adding here one, one frequency to the positions, which changes the tune, changes the frequency, changes the DNA of a newborn baby, or creates a new DNA. What was I going to say again? Oh. And this, this golden ratio type thing going on here is always moving. It's different. It moves around two over the month. It moves that little bit more, probably 2.2 days more. Because as the, as the moon gets lost in here, we don't see it for 2.2 days. So when it, when it comes back out, it's coming back out in a different position. So this is always moving. Can't be 2.2 days, but it doesn't work out. Oh, it could be. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Because you've got the metonic cycle, which is 19 years. But it could be referring to the two system, not just um, uh, in and out. It's up and down the ecliptic plane like this. So you've got a 19 years for that to be in the exact same position and the moon to be out there or wherever it is. Uh, resonant frequency cancellation, I just told you about that one. <coughs> so that's it folks. Uh, there's a few things I wanted to touch on, but I didn't put the phasing in here, it's too complicated because you need a computer, because this is going around every day. This is just a monthly the monthly shape, you could say. It does this over the month. And then back in again. It does a full cardinoid like this. So as the sun comes around close to it again, it starts, the moon starts coming back in. This is in regards to some mythological stories. All the ancients knew how all this worked. They knew the earth was flat. They have it all in full detail. All written out that common man can't even read. The mythological stories about the noose, not being able to kill the lion or something or other. It's the Nordic, Nordic mythological stories, Odlin type thing, I think. And because there's nothing's physical, he couldn't kill the lion with a weapon. So he had to strangle, he waited to a certain time when he went to his end and strangled it. So there's the noose. And, and they mentioned the claws, because he usually had the claws of that slight as the new moon comes out, you see a claw on either side here. These claws here. It's, it's all the mythological stories explain it all. But as long as you, you know, understand the sun moves quicker, passes everything. Planets don't go around the sun, the sun catches up to them. The moon doesn't go around the sun, the sun catches up to them. The projection that is, the projection. And the moon, the moon is a projection too. Everything's a projection. In my last video, I didn't mention it, but what I drew is still, it still works the same way. The direct frequency goes straight to the moon first. It only takes up one frequency to get to the moon. To get to the sun, which is way out in the, in the firmament, which is curved in this field, is through all the frequencies. So that the sun could be facing this way, but the sun we see is way over here, because it comes out, the, the magnetic field comes out like this and spirals around like this. And the sun's lot projected image follows the magnetic field. So if it starts off in this position, it's going straight to the moon first. Because the moon is first. So you get the light of the sun on this side, not the sun projecting light over onto this side. Neutral is this side, the sun is on the neutral side. This is the side we see is the cold side, this side. 
And they're trying to tell us, science tells you, that the sun is creating this moon we see. It's not. The moon we see is the shadow of the sun. It's the negative of the sun. It's the electron. It's the proton. So, like I say, there's a connection between the sun's position and the moon's position. I didn't put my finger on that one for this video. But you have to realize as the moon, as the sun turns away, right, to the head of the moon, <coughs> when it comes out of new moon, um, the moon starts wandering out like a magnetic connection, comes back in. Okay? Feel free to ask me questions. I love questions, especially from these spinning ballers, because I can get them every time. It cannot be debunked, this model. They are screwed. So we've got to get it out there and make dicks of them till they change the whole system and start telling the world the truth. NASA will lose their billions. People will lose their jobs. But who was to pay a liar? megabucks annual salary just because he's silly enough to think he's building a satellite that goes up there in the sky <laughs> when it doesn't probably goes down the road to a factory and gets re-scrapped by freemasons people that are in the club where they just drag it off in some ship and dump it for a few years to rust and go rotten or mount it down in another part of the world i don't know They just, you know, NASA has all the information. They have all the historical information. They know it's flat. I'm pretty sure they know how it all works. I mean, like I said, it's all written in mythological stories, esoteric stuff. I'm sure they've got connections as to how or how it all works and how it means what it what it means. And they've always had it, but you know, they thought, you know, we'll treat people as dummies. We'll take control of the whole system. If we control the uh, rockets and all that, no one else can do it, uh, then we've got them. And this is basically what they're doing. And all the governments are in on it, because they all pay their buddies millions of dollars. It's all laundering, it's all laundering. All their tax dollars are all laundered to their mates. Freemasons, freak masons I call them. The average little Freemason who thinks he's going along to a club because because he thinks he's a gentleman, you know, he's a bit screwed. No. Nah. The top guys who are the Freakmasons, who rule the world, set on genocide, own all the military weapons, control the military industry. Nah. They're just liars. So, understanding the meaning to life is understanding the whole flat earth system. And it's connection with the human brain. There's the human brain. And now the sun is connected to the son of man. His awakening. That's why it's all about religion. It's the sun. The sun's position and the moon. She gives birth, enlightenment and physical birth. This is all governed in a, in a human when they're born. The moon's position. So the the moon in this zodiac sign can tell you a lot of things. And this is the whole Jesus story. He was conceived in the March equinox, born in the December solstice, and resurrected, second birth, um, spiritual birth in the September equinox. He's missing the one quarter, isn't he? And this is the system. You get the three of the Trinity, you're missing the one. So you're missing, uh, as Santos tells us, the salts, the chemicals in that period of gestation. And if you understand all that, <laughs> you can gain this enlightenment. 
So that's the Jesus story. Easter. I should read something on my phone. I've got time. Let's have a look. I've got seven minutes. <clears throat> haven't got my reading glasses down here. Oh, these are good enough. I'll read this. <clears throat> Uh, the date of Easter when resurrection of Jesus is said to have taken place changes from year to year. The reason for this variation is that Easter always falls on the first Sunday after the first full moon following that spring equinox. Now Jesus, the resurrection, was on the 6th of September. It's a whole creation story. And which was the 2017, no, no, the 6th of September, was the full moon. Uh, the first Sunday after the first full moon. So it's connected to the full moon. His birth is on the full moon. And there is a solar eclipse at the new moon before that. So the reason for this variation is that Easter always falls on the first Sunday after the first full moon. But it's not. It's to do with the full moon. Uh, most major holidays have some connection to the changing of seasons. This is especially obvious in the case of Christmas. The New Testament gives no information about what time of year Jesus was born. Many scholars believe, however, that the main reason Jesus' birth came to be celebrated on December 25th is because that was the date of the winter solstice according to the Roman calendar. No, because the 25th of December, or thereabouts, 26th, 24th, 24th I think, was the moon cycle is to do with the Pisces. So he was born in Pisces, oh no, gestation, what do you call it? Conceived in Pisces in the March equinox. Nine months later, born in the December Pisces again. And many years later, when he's a grown man, He's awoken spiritually, second birth, and the moon is in Pisces again. That's the whole divine story. The fishes, all that. Pisces, the moon's in Pisces for three days. It is important to point out that while the name Easter is used in the English-speaking world, many more cultures refer to it by terms best translated as Passover. Pashka. In Greek, a reference indeed to the Jewish festival of Passover. In the Hebrew Bible, Passover is a festival that commemorates the liberation of Jewish people from the slavery in Egypt. That slavery in Egypt represents Kemet. Kemet's a dark place. Coming out of a dark place, spiritually, consciousness, consciously, you're woken up into the light. You're being reborn. Uh, in Exodus, it was and continued to be the most important Jewish seasonal festival. Well, your Passover is this rebirth because it's the Passover, the full moon going over or your, your moon and it's your sign passing over that night. That's the night you'll be woken up. That's how it all works. But I've done plenty, plenty of, uh, well, I've done a few videos on the whole Jesus story. I've done that. Go check them out. If you want to know anything about the Bible, I'll tell you. I know what it all means, all the New Testament. And the Old Testament's all about the psychological battles one goes through after he's been resurrected, come into the light. Because now he has to live in a world full of unwoken people, to put it mildly, to put it nicely. And not only that, he has to he has to handle what's happened to him. He's going through this battle of you know backsliding, oh, oh, come back bro, you're going to be in trouble doing that. He's a witness, he knows what's going on. He knows not to do certain things, you don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't do any of those things. And those people who go to church and they lie and cheat, and rip you off, they're just, they're just scum, nothing but scum. I have, I have a tenant, I had a tenant trash the place. She goes to church every Sunday. I've told her to come back and get her rubbish and her tyres and she hasn't even bothered responding to me. You know, those people are just trash. But anyway, that's enough, I think.
Hope you understand the phasing. Like I say, any questions, I'm, I'm really happy to answer questions. I love questions. So I know I cannot be debunked. Cheers. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Spread the good word.